To tell us more, we've got Andreas Bremer with us. He heads up the Institute for Automotive Market Research in the German city of Essen. 13 litres every 100 kilometres, we just heard there. You've got to have a lot of money for that. You better, yes. Uh, it's, it's not the trend of the future, I, I, I have not. to say. It, are these going to these monsters going to become the new vintage cars of tomorrow, <laughs> do you think? Probably, probably. I mean, there's always going to be people that have the money and are willing to spend it because these cars are fascinating. I mean, that's why we, why we look at them. That's why there are shows about them. What about the job of auto-tuner, though? Mm. Is that going to become, become something of the past as well? I don't really think so. Um, for once, there's always going to be people that enjoy the high-power engine. Uh, and on the other hand, the tuner is going to get a different task. Uh, it, with all the knowledge about uh, engines, the real challenge is going to be reduce fuel consumption mm -hmm. and still uh, give pleasure to, to driving one of these cars. Well, as far as performance goes, that's something that's really big on display at the Geneva Motor mm -hmm. Show this week. Is that something we've forgotten, that we were going to go green at some stage? Well, that's, that's part of the problem, really. Uh, going green and having fun at the same time with a car is, is really uh, what, what, car, what the car industry has to, has to find a solution for. Um, yeah, it seems like we've for forgotten that uh, the green car is, is uh, on our agenda. Um, but I think it's, it's going to come back sooner or later. So what are some of the changes that we are going through right now as far as jobs in the sector go? Mm. Well, cars have become computers on wheels, really, when you look at it. I mean, everything is uh, connected and there's so many sensors and so it's a real system integration. Uh, and we're going to see electricians that become more important for cars, computer uh, specialists that, that work with them. And don't forget the high voltage that they have to deal with. So the mechanic with oil on his fingers uh, it's, it's not going to be a thing of the past, but there's going to be a whole lot less of them. Now, the car industry is, of course, one of the big employers here in Germany. That's clear when you take a look at the numbers. In the year 2000, it was about 750,000 workers. That grew and grew until the financial crisis hit, of mm. course, and then things really went downhill. We can see that there. Now, though, Daimler, for example, is creating 10,000 new jobs worldwide. It's mm -hmm. almost schizophrenic. <laughs> can, can you explain that? Well, on, on one thing, uh, one thing is that we, the, the cars that were sold during this period of one and a half years of crisis uh, were already produced. Mm -hmm. So now demand is coming up again, slowly, however, but these cars need to be produced. Mm -hmm. And they will be produced, but just not in Germany, but elsewhere. And that's, of course, part of the problem that we'll face in Germany, that production is, is going to other countries. Well, another problem we're facing is petrol prices. They're so high at the moment. Is that something that could threaten the industry or put a dampener on job creation, for example? Uh, I'm afraid so. If it's a long-term uh, phenomenon that we're, that, we're, that we're watching here, uh, I'm afraid that um, we will see consumers putting uh, purchases off. If it's a mid-term, short-term, I don't think we're going to have much of a problem. And just briefly, any other developments that could change things in the future for the car industry? Well, the main thing really is the, the petrol crisis right now. Uh, if, if it is going to be one, um, and if that lasts, if Saudi Arabia um, creates problems, then this is what we're going to have to deal with. Andreas Bremer, thank you very much for coming in. Sure.